It's hard when they tell you who you can be. The sky is the limit, just wait and you'll see. So I eagerly run to turn on the TV, only to find out none of these athletes look like me. All the sports channels are showing highlights and lowlights of every sport you can think of, except the one every night that I dream of. Like being fourth in the world is an easy feat. Like we don't show up every single summer without missing a beat. All I ask is for us to get a fair shot, maybe swap out that rerun during the 7 p.m. slot. It has never been said that equal means we are the same. We just want a fair shot at our own fame. We want nothing more than what we deserve, a chance to inspire that next little girl. Instead of growing up with comments like get back in the kitchen or having to coward and hide in submission, instead, she can stand with her head held high, knowing she doesn't have to aspire to hoop like some guy. When she turns on the TV, she can learn to be shifty like Maya Marie. Our faces and names should be known, like the Tatums, homegrown, Brampton's very own. For the resilience, strength, and how we have grown, we deserve all the flowers and the love to be shown. I will always keep it real and give you the facts, just like these young kids say, I promise no cap. I know a couple women who would give you the biz. Try Kia, Murr, Kim, or Liz. And listen, I swear I can do this all day because the next generation is also storming this way. And if at some point I lost you along the way, I'll remind you the message, just repeat what I say. Bet on women, invest in women, protect women, respect women. And I promise not to bore you ever again if you promise to provide equal representation because no one needs a poem, a song, or a revelation. Just put women's sports on the damn television. Mad love. Natalie Chanwa. That was Natalie Achanwa for Canada Basketball's Mad Love campaign. One of the very best to suit up for our national program starting at the age of 16 before heading off to Notre Dame to play for the Irish. The words ring as true as they did when Natalie wrote them and they were released part of the campaign about a year and a bit ago. If you build it, they will come. Natalie Achanwa has come in studio to join me. Thank you very much for doing this. We appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I love to be home and the chance to speak with you and chat with you is, uh, I'm excited. Awesome. So just to back up the words, the WNBA saw a 51% rise in their TV ratings in the United States. In Canada, the opening weekend saw a 325% increase in ratings on Sportsnet 1 and 360, including the most ever watched WNBA game in history. Do you feel, I, we're not there. No. Do you feel like we're getting there? Yes. Yeah. Uh, slowly, step by step, we are getting there. I mean, you could see even the opportunity for Canadians to watch us. So we wouldn't have those ratings if they didn't put us on TV. Right. I remember growing up, I never knew what the WNBA was. I grew up watching the Raptors. I grew up watching the NBA. And so for young girls to now the opportunity to watch women hoop on TV, to come into camps like this and see us firsthand. Uh, we're inspiring the next generation. So you're in town for a camp with Canada basketball, and I'll get into that in a second. But playing at Notre Dame, and we were just talking about your legendary coach going up in the ring of honor, mm -hmm. and having that where, where women's basketball really meant something on that campus because you guys were perennially really good. Is that what opened your eyes to what could be for us, our national program, and maybe even something professionally? Yeah, I mean, being the first Canadian and actually the only Canadian to play with that women's basketball program, I was trying to take anything I could from that experience and continuously bring it back. Right. I mean, I've been playing with the national team in Canada basketball program since I started playing basketball, and I've seen the growth in the game. I see how it's continued to grow not only basketball in Canada, but especially our women's program. And, yeah. I mean, to learn from somebody as legendary as Coach McGraw, um, I can only continue to aspire to be like her. Awesome. So Drake on Instagram talking about a WNBA franchise in Toronto. I've been saying it from, for years. You're from the Southern Ontario area. Do you feel like we're ready for it? We're ready for something. So yeah. whether it's a WNBA team, a women's professional league, there's the support, there's the love for the game, there's the growth in our women's game to have something here domestically on Canadian soil. So 
whether Drake's right and we're going to bring a WNBA team or if we're going to have our own league here, something needs to happen. We need to keep our talent at home, continue to get it better at home without having to go overseas, put the wear and tear on your body of playing year round and to continue to grow domestically the women's game. I'm so glad you brought that up because I feel like uh, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. I say how important domestic leagues are in Canada. I support the CPL, which is a Canadian soccer professional league. The CEBL, which is a Canadian uh, elite basketball league that has brought an opportunity for Canadians to play in Canada. And you've played all over the world. Like you've played professionally in the United States, of course, in the WNBA, but you've also played in China, if I'm not mistaken, South Korea, Italy. You've never played professionally at home in Canada. We just don't do that here, and I don't understand why. And not only for the professional athletes, but for the community, for the fans, yes, for the next the generation, for the young it. girls to yeah. be able to see firsthand I can be her someday and to not have to do it on TV or not have to have connections through Canada basketball. Uh, I didn't have that growing up. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to be thrown into the Canada basketball world at a young age that I had these firsthand role models that became my teammates. But we need to be able to touch more lives. We need to be able to young boys, young girls to see strong, powerful, passionate women play live. And that's the only way you're going to do it if you get a team or you get a league here on Canadian soil. So you're not just talk of the talk. I know you walk the walk and I know that there are certain things that you work towards. What do you think is the best for Canada? Is it a WNBA team or is it would you rather see something like the CEBL for women? Why can't we have both? Good. Right. Yeah. Why can't we have both? Yeah. The men have both. Why can't we have both? Yeah. And like I always say that I'm, I'm trying to leave footprints in the sand. I know it might not be realistic for all these things to come true in my career, given right. that I've, I've put my years <laughs> in. But, but for me, it, it's, it's never just about me. It's, it's how many people can we bring along? How much change can we bring in the time that I do get to lace up my sneakers for Canada and in this country? Um, so eventually, I'd love for us to have both. So I was watching the Mad Love video again. We played it. Uh on the show when you made the video when it came out but I wanted the refresher and I noticed a uh, a picture that Canada basketball used of you and I don't even know if you remember the picture that they used of you I'll call it somewhat regal <laughs> you draped in a Canadian flag and right at the bottom of that picture you can see there's a sponsorship of a, a little OVO sponsorship and I wondered I thought like if Drake's gonna put it on his Instagram I said this to Jesse when he brought this up to me. Why doesn't he own the team? Hmm. Like, in Canada, if yeah. Drizzy wants to be that guy, he could afford the team, I think. Yeah. Like, would it be a good jump start to have, if he wants to be a part of this, which he obviously has because he sponsored the women's program, mm -hmm. maybe he could own the team? Hey, I mean, that would be amazing. You see the crossover of culture, music, and sports all the time. So if Drake wants to put his money where his mouth is, I would love for him to sponsor a team. So if he's watching this, come on, bring that WMA team to Toronto yeah. while I'm still hooping. I, I, think, I think it's the start. Honestly, I thought, immediately I thought, the way he worded that, maybe he wants to actually own the team. And him just wanting to be a part of it, I think, is good because he is... Like, listen, he, he understands where the waves are going, mm -hmm. and the fact that he feels like the wave might be the WNBA in Canada, I think that's pretty cool. I want to talk about the, the growth of the national program, because I feel like in, in the love that I have for domestic professional leagues, I feel like the growth of the national team kind of intertwines. We see that on the soccer side, the women win Olympic gold, uh, Olympic bronze. We see that on the men's side, where the program, the trajectory is in the right spot. Canadian soccer teams in Edmonton, it looks like they're going to sell out with Alfonso Davies coming home. Like, there's that cool kind of synergy between the two. Does it feel like you guys are ranked fourth in the world, still ranked fourth in the world? Yeah. I know this summer was a bit of a disappointment. Yeah. Uh, however, does it feel like that trajectory is in the right spot? I 100% feel like it is. And why I can passionately say this is this camp we're having right now with these 15, 16 year olds and, yeah. and, and just being able to play with them and firsthand see that what the next generation is bringing to the table, I wholeheartedly know that that trajectory is up. Like we're, we're getting better. We, there's no drop off from our younger teams coming up to this senior team and, and we know that we're putting in the work. Right. And it's not something you get fourth in the world and you settle because we haven't won anything yet. Right. And so our goals are still the same and the work is still being put in in the same and know that 
that's the only way we're going to get better is if we continue to not only individually get better, but when we have moments like this, connecting with each other, bringing the next generation along so that right. we can continue to grow the game here. So I, I get to watch every once in a while because the U.S. puts these games up. We get to watch uh, uh, Letitia Almeher. Mm -hmm. You get to see Aaliyah Edwards play. Um, now you're seeing Cheyenne Day Wilson, who is at Duke play. Um, when you're playing with these younger girls who are even the next generation beyond that. you were on the team at 16 yeah. you know what it was like yeah are, are these are these athletes getting better and better or is it just me uh, they are yeah. I mean athleticism alone I love to say that at one point I might have been a, a little <laughs> athletic but uh, today we had Toby in the gym and, and she's dunking and she's on her U16 team. And I'm like, I know I could never do that. I might have been able to like grab maybe a baby oop, but it, right. it, this next generation, I mean, the access that they have to trainers, the access that they have to things that, that I didn't have growing up, uh, it's setting them up for success. And I, and I love it. I was saying I was part of NIDA before prep schools were a thing. That was our prep school. Right. So I love the, the opportunities that they're being given and how they're taking advantage of them and continue to challenge their own games, challenge the game in Canada, challenge just women's basketball as a whole. So we're still ranked fourth in the world. Yeah. Um, and we had Lisa Tomitis on before the Olympics and talked about all the challenges of just getting women together before the tournaments and getting the practice in. Was there learned, like, can you take something from what happened in Tokyo? Like, is, is there teaching moments there? For sure. Yeah. Uh, endless teaching moments, not only just at the tournament, but the lead up to it. And uh, I'm never one to, to make excuses for, for failures, um, but there's also growth in those. And we're going to take those and figure out how, as a federation, we can use them so that the next time we do have an opportunity to play in Olympics or, or a World Cup that's coming up in Australia, that, that we are prepared and that we put our best foot forward. And so it took a lot of internal reflection, personally, as well as of the team, on, on where can we be get better? What adjustments do we need to make to take our team to this next step? So thankfully, we are still fourth in the world because uh, we worked really hard to get there. Yeah. But you can't settle with that, and that's not what we're going to do. So back to the drawing board on, on how we can make improvements and uh, continue to fight the fight to get on the podium. Can you draw some inspiration from the women's soccer team who seem to be at that kind of you know, couldn't get over it. You know, the United States are just too good. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, they're, they're gold medal winners. I, I love to see that, to watch that, for us to be able to, to be happy for them and, and to know also that they were at a point where they were constantly the same, constantly the same, yeah. and just took them one opportunity to get over that hump. And so we're looking at them as, as motivation on our time is coming. As long as we continue to put in the work, uh, we'll get there. All right, so, so we want to help. Um, we've already kind of... Put out the word Drake, like, Jersey. If you're if you're watching right now, you can buy the team. Uh, we can we can make Uncle Timmy's words ring true when Jesse brought it up to me. Just buy the team, bring it here. The the domestic league. What are the next steps that you would like to see? And I know I love that you you everyone wants everything now, especially in 2021. But you understand that there are steps that you have to take. So what are the next steps that you'd like to see where it seems like it's going the right direction in this country? Well, uh, there, like you said, there's a business aspect of it. So I know that you can't just snap your fingers and all of a sudden you have funding, you have venues, you have everything that you need to bring a league here. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the continued push to expand the WNBA, whether it be in Toronto, of course, um, or in general, will bring more teams, bring more support, bring that conversation to a point where uh, people, investors, and everyone is seeing that it's a great investment. You have right. to bet on women. You have to put your money where your mouth is. Right. And uh, the steps forward for us to have a domestic league would be uh, making sure that we continue to have our prep schools, our Canadian women's basketball team, our Canada basketball to make these players better, get in the gym, continue that growth of Canada basketball right. um, so that we do have the, the players and the talent to fill these leagues. We don't want just have, want to have a league. We want a good league. Right. And a sustainable league. A sustainable league. I'm glad you brought up the business side of it because yeah. uh, the great Wu-Tang Clan once taught me that cash rules everything around me. Hey, so. does it ever. It does it <laughs> so, ever. <laughs> so, hey, listen, great talk. Drizzy, if you're watching by the team, appreciate you stopping by. And uh, hopefully we can do this again down the road where we're getting closer or have both those leagues. I'd love to bring a medal back on your show next time. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> Thanks Hold for on. having me. <laughs> a medal will be there. Natalie Achala, everyone. <laughs>